that's kind of cool. All right, so my name is Max Spivak. I have been working at Red Hat for about five and a half years. Uh, for the last four years, more or less, I've been very deeply involved in the Fedora project. And right now, I am a member of Red Hat's community team. And I've been asked to speak today a little bit about Fedora's governance model. And I think I'm a pretty good person to talk about that because I've been involved in Fedora's governance for quite a while. And I've seen us try different things in order to organize the Fedora community. Some of them have worked well. No problem. Uh, some of them haven't, and uh, and I think though that if we're going to talk about Fedora's governance model, it's it's better to take a step back and talk about how open source communities actually get things done, to remind people about the incentives around how those communities interact and why people participate in them to begin with, and then to think about the role that governance should or shouldn't play in those communities. So I wrote this speech yesterday. It's the first time I've given it. Or we'll see how it all goes. Um, I want to think about things that governance is and things that governance is not. And we're going to make a list of a few things and then, uh, and then sort of talk about them. So governance is not a starting point. It's also not an endpoint. I'll talk about this in a little more detail in a moment. And over here, I want to say that governance is a way of providing process and memory. Right? It's a way of allowing rules to be followed and decisions to be made. That last one is very important. Someone, if someone wants to create slides for my talk as I give it, uh, uh, you're more than welcome to. Feel free. So. The Fedora project is built on ideas. It's not built on governance, right? And any new idea that somebody has or any new activity that someone's going to take inside of Fedora or any open source community, they're going to do it because they want to solve a problem, not because they want to create bureaucracy, right? And if we think about some of the problems that people have had that the Fedora project has been able to help them solve over the last few years, right? Governance doesn't enter into any of it until you're quite a long way down the road. What are some of the things people have wanted to do with Fedora? They wanted to create custom versions of Fedora. We call those spins, right? There were people who said for years and years, KDE sucks in Fedora, and that's a problem that we want to fix, right? Better quality RPMs, a problem that the Fedora project has tried to solve. Red Hat controls uh, translations. This was another problem that Fedora faced over the last few years. All of these things are problems people have wanted to solve. And the interesting thing then to think about is how, is how we have used governance in some cases to solve these problems, but to remember that we didn't start by saying we need to create bureaucracy. And that once you create some governance or bureaucracy, you have to use it, and you have to make sure that it's doing its job. And you can't just stop once you have a bunch of rules and processes in place, or else you're not going to make any forward progress, right? And what you're trying to create in all of these cases is a, is a process that can be followed and remembered as people move in and out of volunteer communities especially. Um, you need a way to have some institutional memory so that you don't have to solve the same problems and reinvent the wheel over and over again. And you need a way to make sure that decisions can be made, right? There are, there are uh, it's a classic problem in open source communities where you've got some communities where it is almost impossible to make a decision, right? And, and simple, simple decisions can take a very long time to be made. You argue about the same things over and over again, and there's no one who is, who is in a position of leadership to say, 
this is the way it's going to be. I understand all the different points that are being made, but we have to make progress. That's what governance can provide. Um, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. In a little bit, I'm going to come back and use these four examples once again and talk about some of the governance that exists within Fedora that was created to solve these problems, but, but I, I don't want to go there. Uh, I don't want to go there quite yet. What, what is, um, all right, let me pause and see if there's any questions or comments so far. I know this is kind of still just introductory. Yes, please, talk loud. You need to say it again into the microphone. Hi. Uh, what about communication between uh, the members of a community yeah. or um, local communities or country communities? Yeah. What about communication? Is a problem that uh, you have to um, sort it out or is well, a problem or not? Well, I, I, think, I, think that, uh, I think that the questions of how a community of people com uh, communicates and collaborates is entirely separate from any sort of governance question at all. And, and actually, uh, I think if you give me a little bit of time, I'm going to talk about this in a little while. So let me kind of get to that, and then we'll see if I don't answer your question, you can ask it again. Any other comments so far? Yes, please, loud. I have one question uh, about control. Uh, on yeah. Governance is a way of, that's a good question. Uh, there is a difference between governance and control, I would say, because uh, control, if someone just, if, if someone, I feel like a politician now, if someone, if someone is going to take control of something without setting up any processes for how that control is enacted, that feels quite wrong to me, right? But if you create a set of processes through a governance model that allows for individuals or certain roles, really, that individuals can move in or out of to have some control, that sort of just makes sense. And as any group of, of, of individuals trying to do something gets to a certain size, I suppose it's probably inevitable at some point that you need some way of control. So I, I, I guess that defendable and transparent control I would say is governance and decisions that are just randomly being made with no explanation or context is not governance and is probably going to uh, doom your community uh, pretty quickly. So, you like that answer? All right. All right. Okay. So, it's also important to remember that uh, this is. This, this next point is something that I, I say in uh, New Hire Orientation at Red Hat. I, I'm one of the speakers at Red Hat's New Hire Orientation. And, and I tell the people that are coming into Red Hat who have, who have not necessarily maybe participated in open source before, people often tend to say, well, the open source community thinks this, or the open source community thinks that. And, and I tell people there is no open source community. There are thousands of small open source communities. Some of them are one person. Some of them are a group of people that are starting to come together to do something. But they don't all think with one voice. And the beauty of the model is that you're, you've got a system where people can all act relatively independently. And as they find that they have interests that coincide with each other, they can choose to group together. And Linux distributions like Fedora uh, provide a synchronization clock to these thousands of communities that allow people to know that if they can, if, if everyone kind of gets their act together in certain milestones, then eventually it all comes together in a distribution that provides some nice, uh, nice presentation to the world and allows you to get eyeballs and, and users and, and viewers uh, of your stuff. But um, because each community produces its own code and has its own rules and processes, uh, even within the Fedora project, which is just a bunch of small communities itself, um, the governance has to be, in my opinion, uh, as limited as possible in order to have organization and in order for people to get things done. Uh, but I think we always have to be wary of creating more governance than is actually needed 
uh, to do something. So if that makes me a, a certain uh, political slant, so be it. But uh, I think that in volunteer communities, uh, when you start to do stuff with governance, it becomes very dangerous and you have a, an opportunity to really screw up uh, if you don't do it right. And nobody really likes doing governance. Everyone would rather work on code or work on the, the other things that they need to do. Uh, but when you do need to bring some order and structure to your community, it's important to kind of have thought about uh, uh, how you want to do it. Um, and, and I guess that gets into, I, I guess that kind of gets into this point over here, where I say that governance is not an endpoint. You don't create governance just to have governance, right? That, that's, that's a little too... Uh, that's a little too recursive uh, for, for my taste. Um, you need to have the smallest amount of governance necessary to get things organized, and I think your governance needs to be adaptable and flexible. One of the gr governance groups that we have within the Fedora project is called the Fedora Ambassador Steering Committee, and it's been around for, what, four or five years? Something like that now, right? Five years? It's been around for five years, and the things that, uh, the things that that steering committee did five years ago and the things that they do today are entirely different. And I think that's a good thing, right? It has shown that um, the reason we have a Fedora Ambassador Steering Committee, first of all, is because of all the different parts of the Fedora project, the ambassadors group, those are the people who are responsible for uh, making sure there's a Fedora booth at an event like FOSDEM, or making sure that we have sort of an on-the-ground evangelization team for Fedora everywhere in the world. It's the most spread out and most distributed of all the different sub-pieces of the Fedora project. It's also the most uh, uh, diverse in terms of languages, right? And the Fedora Ambassador Steering Committee is, uh, comes together to provide a little bit of central organization around that. And five years ago when we first created it, um, the problems that it faced were uh, basically what is the purpose even of an ambassador's project within Fedora? What does an event look like? How do we know what events the Fedora project wants to go to? How do we uh, organize a booth? How do you have uh, you know, a process for an event owner? How does that event owner find any sort of budget to do things? Right? Very logistical questions in nature. As we have grown, that governance body has evolved and it has stopped worrying about those things, which is a success case, right? We have regional part, uh, ambassador groups all over the world that are basically self-sufficient, and now the Fedora Ambassador Steering Committee really only worries about two major things. Number one, uh, managing budget and watching to make sure that it's relatively distributed around the world, and number two is sort of the training and mentoring process uh, of new ambassadors worldwide. And this guy right here, Jörg Simon, actually, is in charge of that, and he does a phenomenal job with it. Um, the point is that this governance body, which is only seven people out of a Fedora community that's thousands of people large, um, its scope is limited, and what it does over time changes, and it hasn't been afraid to say, we don't need to worry about this thing anymore, we don't need to have control or power over this particular item, and it's able to give it away. So I think it's important to realize that just because you needed some governance at one point in time doesn't mean that governance always has to continue, and you have to not be afraid uh, to dismantle or change the, the, the goals of that governance as it goes on. I spent, there's a lot of Fedora people in this room. I spent a bunch of time last night trying to think of, a, of an example where we actually have dismantled completely some sort of governance structure that existed, and I couldn't, I couldn't think of one where we actually said we no longer need this, this governance because all it's doing is, is having bureaucracy. Can anyone think of one? I could think of plenty of cases where the scope of the, of the governance changed, but I couldn't think of one where we, where we completely threw it away. And I think that's, I think that's a problem, right? If, if, if this room was full entirely of of, of Fedora people and, and, and uh, from all over the part of the project and, and a lot of the engineering parts of the project, I would argue to all of those people that uh, even Fedora, which tries to think very carefully about its governance structure, has too much of it. And I think that one of the things that Fedora needs to do is try to reduce uh, the total amount of governance and, and bureaucracy uh, that it has. Let me see if I've covered... Let me see if I've covered all of this stuff. I'm going to get to this a little bit later. I'm still going to get to this. Um, 
In fact, I'm going to do that right now, unless there's any, uh, any questions or comments. Yes, Dimitris. Uh, this is only supposed to be so that the video camera picks up what I'm saying. So I just have to project. Can you hear me? Okay. Water break. Let's see. All right, so let's talk a little bit about... Let's talk a little bit about some of the, the way governance actually looks in, in Fedora. So this is the governance mountain. And it starts with the individual. As I said before, the, 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 core, the core of our community, and it's so obvious, it's silly to repeat it, is people who want to do something, right? Every person who is involved in the Fedora project is doing it for a reason, right? Either they're trying to learn something themselves about open source, or they're trying to make something better in either the part of the world where they live or the, the code that they care about. Um, they have their own goals, and they have their own reasons, and they have their own motivations, and they have their own incentives, and every single one of those people is right. right? One of the fundamental, uh, one of the fundamental uh, principles, I, I think, that, that a community like Fedora is built on and especially a community that is so deeply volunteer driven, is that anything that you want to be able to do within that community, as long as it follows the basic values of that community, uh, should be acceptable, right? And no one should tell you that it's right or wrong. And so we have individuals who do all sorts of crazy stuff in Fedora, right? Um, and, and sooner or later, those individuals find other people who are equ equally crazy, or crazy about the same things, and they kind of band together uh, to form regional, you know, regional teams. We've got the, the sort of ambassador leadership team in Europe. We've got um, uh, the people that, uh, that take care of, uh, I don't know, I'm drawing a blank, but we've got, we've got all sorts of people that, that voluntarily sort of join together as they realize, well, you know, the, the three of us are all doing something that's 90% the same. Let's pool our efforts. Let's pool our resources. We become, we become a little more e efficient in what we're trying to do. And yeah, I'm going to get to that in a second, yeah. The point I want to make is that at this level, there is no governance at all yet, right? You've got people that are just doing what they think is right, and they're working together, and they're collaborating with other folks, and there is no governance model. No one's had to ask permission to do anything. Um, uh, in fact, uh, I think one of the hallmarks of the Fedora community is that we, we provide permission by default, right? Uh, you don't have to ask permission of anybody in order to get something done, and you can get a whole heck of a lot done without any sort of governance at all. All this is is communication, right? Um, uh, the key to, to, to successful open projects is not to build bureaucracy around it, but to have open mailing lists, to have a, a roadmap, a public roadmap that says, here are our five most important goals in a prioritized order and what we're trying to get done in the next year. Uh, this isn't governance, this is just transparent uh, project management, and you can get a really long way uh, just on that. Now, the place where governance starts to come into things in the Fedora project, as Yaron said, at the next level, is what we call a special interest group. And a special interest group in Fedora is uh, a very, very low level uh, of governance, in fact. Um, Mostly it's just a way of kind of formalizing uh, the things that some people care about. So we have a special interest group in Fedora around fonts. And that group, uh, they try to package up one new font uh, every week and get it into the Fedora project. They advertise uh, uh, freely licensed fonts that they find out there in the internet that need to be packaged. They talk about it on uh, the Fedora blogs every week and they try to get people to who have packaging expertise to, to show up and help them package and add more and more fonts to Fedora. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, the Fedora project started its cloud special interest group with a single goal of trying to make Fedora images for Amazon EC2 not suck. Right? The last working Fedora image on EC2 was Fedora 8. We're now at Fedora 12. They've decided that is horrible. And our goal as a, as a group of people is to make that not suck. And, and, and the special interest group model 
All it does is say, we're going to create a mailing list for this. We're going to create a wiki page for this. We're just going to have a little bit of organization um, so that as other people start to hear about what we're doing and care about it, they have somewhere that they can come. No clear leader, right? It's complete meritocracy. Whoever is doing the work and, and projecting the vision uh, is in the leadership role. No expectations either, right? Uh, a special interest group within the Fedora project can be wildly successful or can fail miserably, and it won't have a bad impact on the final Fedora distribution that we make every six months, right? Uh, there's a lot of freedom to experiment and try new things, and these two problems, really, uh, having more customized versions of Fedora and making KDE uh, better in Fedora, were both solved with, uh, with sort of the special interest group uh, governance model, right? We have a Fedora, or we have a, a, a SPINS special interest group that has come together with some process around how you create, <coughs> pardon me, how you create any custom version of Fedora. Yaron, you're in charge of that, right? Say what it does while I get my voice back. Regulates what you can and cannot do in a customization of Fedora, and oh, it regulates what you can and cannot do in a customized version of Fedora that is then finally targeted to be released as part of Fedora. So there's <laughs> there's no like customizations that might finally break a user system, and we we verify that. Uh, we have a process for <coughs> the rest of the government's model to also uh, participate at a certain point, and we have we, we safeguard those processes basically. How many people? Uh, five <laughs> who show up regularly, seventeen on the list. And how many uh, and how many spins of Fedora have you guys managed to get through the process? Uh, Twelve in total, ten currently. Pretty good. Uh, similarly, um, I don't know if any of the Fedora KDE people are here. Are any of you here? It's a really incredible success case because, uh, in my opinion, uh, and I think that, that people who use KDE and Fedora would confirm this, four years ago, uh, the Fedora KDE compared to other distributions uh, KDE offering, I think Fedora was, was pretty far behind. And the work that this group of people have done to improve the quality of KDE and Fedora is nothing short of phenomenal. And it's been entirely volunteer driven. And I guess the point as it relates back to governance is they did it all without any sort of layer of oversight or, or permission asking or anything that had to happen, right? Um, an individual group of people simply motivated to get things done uh, and who did it, uh, who did it relatively uh, you know, transparently. The next level of governance that we have in Fedora is what we call the project. Somewhat overloaded word because there's the Fedora project and then there are the projects within Fedora. We call it like the Fedora sub-projects, the Fedora infrastructure project, the Fedora marketing project, the Fedora documentation project, um, uh, the Fedora release engineering, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and from the Fedora point of view, this is where we actually do start to get some level of, 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 of governance and, and, and process, right? And before I talk about a little more about what that is, uh, I want to say that I think that if, if, you, if, you're, if you're responsible sort of for the larger vision of any open source community, you should think about how far you can get, and the answer is you can get really, really, really far with virtually no governance model being need to put in place, right? And if you're thinking to yourself, we've got a whole bunch of problems and it seems like a governance board is the only thing that we could use to solve those problems, I think first you need to take a step back and ask yourself, how well are we doing on, on making sure that all communication is happening on mailing lists? How are we doing on posting logs of IRC meetings so that everyone can see it? Are we having private conversations that never get back out to the community? Do we have a roadmap that's public that shows people you know, what we care about and where we're going and prevent some sort of a vision. And make sure you answer all of those questions first. And if you're doing all that stuff great 
and you're still at the point where you still need a little bit of centralized organization, fine. But first, make sure you're doing the fundamentals right before you go and start to, to, to spend time uh, building, building any sort of governance because there's an opportunity cost there because you can't do other things. Um, in the Fedora level, something that is a Fedora project uh, is critically important, right? Uh, and if it doesn't go right, the ramifications of that are pretty much, from any level, from really unfortunate to totally disastrous uh, for the Fedora project, right? If Fedora's release engineering and infrastructure processes fall completely apart, um, we have no websites, we have no build system, we have no way of distributing Fedora to anybody, you know, we're dead, right? Um, if, the, if the Fedora ambassador project falls apart, uh, then I'm not standing here giving this talk, right? There's nobody around the world helping to spread Fedora into universities, helping to grow new, uh, you know, helping to grow new contributors, and, uh, and, and recruiting new people to join the Fedora project and participate because new contributors are the lifeblood of any open source project, right? People get married, people have kids, people get different jobs, people can't contribute as much as they used to. So if there aren't new people coming into your project all the time, uh, you're, 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 you're in trouble. My voice is starting to run out, so I'm going to try to move quickly to the end. <coughs> um, here's my, uh, oh, hold on, let me finish these two things. One of the goals that people had in Fedora was we need to make sure we have high quality RPMs, right? Um, governance was not really a solution for this. We have a packaging committee in Fedora, which is a few people who are experts at building packages who maintain a set of packaging guidelines, right? We have process around making sure that RPMs are built consistently and can have some QA and, uh, and things like that. But there, there's not, a, there's not a, and to the extent that you would call process governance, then I suppose we have some governance there. But there's no, you know, there's, there's no, um, there's no king of Fedora packaging who makes the final decision, right? There's a group of people who, by acclamation, own Fedora's packaging guidelines. They own it because they're the experts in that area, not because someone said, okay, you who've never written a package before, you're now in charge of Fedora packaging. Um, so it, it, it's, it's very much uh, the meritocracy, I suppose, right? I think, I think that by being true to meritocracy and letting the best and smartest people in a particular subject, have that leadership and encouraging them to take that leadership, that's a much more organic form of governance than saying, well, we have all these roles of, you know, a czar of this and, and leader of that and president of this that have to be filled. Um, uh, yeah. The other problem that we had over time was Red Hat. Red Hat had too much control over the translation process. Um, for a long time, it was very difficult. Uh, it was very difficult as a community member to do a, a good job of uh, participating in the process of translating everything that Fedora goes through. Um, and how did we solve this problem? Uh, what what kind of governance did we use to solve that problem? Well, actually, uh, I would say we used pretty strong governance there. Um, we started by finding the people outside of Red Hat. Demetrius, right here, is is the the main guy who understood the problems around translation and cared deeply about solving them. We enabled those people, and when I say we here, I guess I have to get to the last level, which is the Fedora board. I'll talk about what they do in a minute. We enabled the, the, those people who cared the most about translation and understood it to go and attack that problem and said, Forget about the way we currently do things. If you were going to sort of start over and you had an opportunity to fix this problem from scratch, how would you do it? And with that freedom, uh, they were able to build a Fedora localization project. They were able to create some new software called TransFX, and that has been so successful and done so well that it's led to its own company, right? This is the, fir the first example of a, of a spin-off company out of the Fedora project. How incredible is that, right? its own company that is, that is working to try to get translations done all across the open source ecosystem, right? Um, and, that, and that's not because of a good governance model anywhere. Again, it's because of people with a vision willing to do hard work 
and governance didn't get in their way. Um, the last thing I want to say before my, I get into my end, end part of the talk is, because I am supposed to talk about Fedora's governance model, there's this thing called the Fedora board. It's like any other board, I suppose. It's Fedora's sort of strategic executive committee, right? Um, if there is a problem that bubbles all the way up to the top of the chain and no one can make a, a, a decision, it's the Fedora's bo Fedora board's responsibility to make that decision. Uh, the Fedora board, to some extent, um, has an ability to, I would say, suggest strategy, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, a vantage point and a, and, a, and a platform by which they can say, here are the things that we think are most important to the Fedora project, but they can't mandate, they can't mandate anything, right? In an open source community like Fedora, a vision and a strategy is only as successful as the people willing to rally around that vision and follow it. But nonetheless, we have a Fedora board uh, made up of, uh, of our community members um, who, who are responsible for sort of the overall direction of Fedora. And, and, and the chairman of that board is a person who fills the job role of the Fedora project leader. And, uh, and, and, and that person in the end is ultimately, uh, at least from Red Hat's perspective, right, the Fedora project leader is considered ultimately accountable for the success of the Fedora project. Um, and why do I think that's important? I, I do think it is important ultimately because decisions have to get made, right? And you need the person in this job who's of the right personality and is not sort of a dictatorial, wanting to take and seize control sort of person. You need someone who's going to talk to everybody. You need someone who's going to listen to the smartest people that they know and sort of try to do what those people say and take five really smart visions and condense them into one plan forward. But you do need somebody who, and it does happen, when a problem goes all the way up and it even comes to the board level, and the Fedora board can't decide because it's a difficult problem. You need someone who can say, here's what we're going to try just so we can move forward. And if it turns out it was the wrong decision, we can admit that in, in, a, in a couple of months and try something else. But, but you kind of do need that final, uh, that, that final, uh, that final decision-making point, I believe. Um, you know, when we go to questions and answer, feel free to push back on me if you don't agree. Um, The, the last thing I want to say, the, the last two things I want to say are, are sort of the, the final points. Um, governance is not vision. Governance is not motivational, right? I don't think anyone has ever been inspired to do anything because of a governance model, right? Governance models make me want to fall asleep. Um, people make me want to do something. Ideas make me want to do something, right? Problems within Fedora that I care about and I want to solve, that's the sort of stuff that inspires me, right? In the, in the years that I've participated in Fedora, you know, I've been inspired by the idea of growing regional leadership teams around the world. I've been inspired by the idea of making sure that the experience of contributing to Fedora is as similar as possible, regardless of whether you are a senior engineer at Red Hat or a college student who is just learning how to you know, how to code, right? Um, I've been inspired by the idea of, of trying to provide as much transparency as possible into Fedora. Um, these, are, these are ideas, these are missions. That's what people rally around, and that's what people want to do. So, uh, again, setting up governance because you don't know what else to do in your project is not a good idea, right? Um, make sure that you have a vision. Make sure that you can articulate that vision in public and make sure that if someone comes to you and says, I think that vision is cool, how can I help? You have an answer for them, right? Again, check those sorts of things before you start building or thinking about governance models because those are far more important uh, to, to the health of your project. Uh, the last point I want to make also is that governance is not a set of beliefs or values, right? Those have to come from the organization as well. There's a book that everybody in this room should read called The Starfish and the Spider. Has anyone read it or heard of it? Few people. Um, it, the Starfish and the Spider. Um, and it talks about uh, sort of the, the anatomy of leaderless organizations, right? And, and one of the points that that book makes is that 
an organization doesn't come up with values, but rather the values itself are the organization, right? And Fedora's four key values, the four foundations of Fedora, freedom, friends, features, and first, those came from the community, right? Those came out of conversations that we had at Fedora user and developer conferences, mailing list conversations, thinking and talking and arguing about what fundamentally is most important to the people who join this community. And those are the values that start with the individual contributor and have to be reflected all the way up the organization and through any governance that we build. You can't have people say, you can't have one person say, here's our values and push it down. The values have to go from bottom up. The values are the organization. And uh, if you want to think more about this, you should read that book, The Starfish and the Spider, because uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, I guess that's more or less all I wanted to say. We've got a few minutes for sort of questions and, and comments and all that. So talk loud and whatever. Yeah. So where do uh, FASCO and FEMSCO fit into this entire FESCO and FAS FEMSCO fit into this entire committees? structure? Yeah. Um, some of the Fedora projects have steering committees. Um, I don't know how to describe them. Uh, it's a small group of people who who do the boring work. <laughs> uh, maybe on some level. I mean, someone else answer it for me. How would you describe it, Yaakov? You've been around. Basically, the, fem the steering committees are a level above the SIGs where decisions bubble up through them and they make the critical decisions of how do pro projects get implemented. For example, in the case of the Fedora Ambassadors, the FAMSCO has decided how we're going to be doing the whole structure of the mentoring program and what are the criteria we were looking for, who's going to be a mentor, who do we approve as mentors, and what are the ground rules for that entire program and maintain that program's functionality. And in the case of FESCO, or in the case of, say, the, the basically for the packaging committee, which is half the people in FESCO or packaging committee at one point or another in their career, these are the people who are making a lot of the engineering decisions of what is allowed, what's not allowed, technical decisions, highly detailed uh, professional decisions that people have to make and that have to get done. So I'm trying to figure out what the business term is for, for that in terms of an organization. But they're basically the people who are the, the vice presidents of different organizations within a, a, a corporation. It, it, it allows... It allows the most critical and complicated pieces of the Fedora project to have a, f a, a, a representation when talking to each other by a small group of people, right? I, I think about the, the release readiness meetings that we have where we get together the, you know, one person from infrastructure, ambassadors, marketing, you know, engineering, QA. We get together one person who's sort of is appointed to be the, the, the spokesperson for that part of the Fedora project. And as we get close to a release, we get all those people together to make sure that all the different pieces of Fedora are kind of working together. That's governance, but it's pretty lightweight. And it's governance in the interest of making sure that we have some transparency and good communication, um, as opposed to governance just for the sake of having meetings or something like that, right? Yes. I'd say that the uh, steering committees are a tool to get stuff done so that you have <coughs> fewer people to decide and who represent the community. And the second is accountability. Right. Right. Yeah. So I have a question at the um, governance at the level of SIG groups. Yeah. So you said that there you have meritoc meritocracy, which is okay. It's yeah. normal. It works in most cases. Yeah. But in, in some cases, if you don't have like a de facto recognized person which is like kind of the leader you can have two people which d which do both a lot of works mm -hmm. and that sometimes they arrive at a conflict so yes. they have a technical decision on which they do not agree so yep. do we have a standard method to get around this kind of situation um, at, at, at the level of a special interest group for example uh, the, pe the people who are working on the, the the cloud stuff for Fedora right they want to get Fedora stuff working with Amazon um, if there's two people who are arguing two different methodologies and they both seem good and, and a decision can't be made, uh, actually nobody is going to step in, right? No, 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 no steering committee member who's been elected by the community, no Fedora board member or Fedora project leader is going to step in and say, all right, this guy's going to do it. 
uh, maybe people will, you know, you have to separate the role that somebody fills from the person themselves. Maybe somebody who's an expert in Fedora engineering and is therefore on the Fedora engineering steering committee might read the mailing list thread and say, well, you know, I've read this and I've thought about it and my personal opinion is, you know, this idea is better for these reasons and maybe that'll tip the balance and help make a decision be made. But that's, that's just the community being the community. That's not someone saying, because I fill a certain role, you will listen to me. And I think that's a very important distinction, right? Um, uh, I, it, I, somebody, I can't take credit for what I'm about to say because I read it on the Fedora Advisory Board mailing list. Somebody sort of made the point of saying that, uh, especially in a volunteer community, if you are elected to a leadership role, you have to remember that you've been elected to that role because of the achievements that you've made in that community and also because the rest of the community is trusting you that you will uh, you know, that you, that you will speak on behalf of them and not place your own sort of personal agenda at the top. So, uh, you know, it, it's important to, to, to put people in leadership positions in a volunteer community who are going to be humbled by that and remember that that gives them extra responsibility as opposed to someone who sees that as sort of an ego boost, right? I think that's another another potential danger of of governance in open source communities is that you don't want it to, you know, if you put the wrong people in leadership positions where it thinks it makes them a god or something like that, you're going to have very, very big problems. Yes, please. Uh, is Fedora project leader a member of the board or a, a completely separate entity? And um, if so, why? Is the Fedora project leader a member of the Fedora board? Yeah. Uh, the Fedora project, le yeah, the Fedora board has nine people on it. The Fedora project leader is sort of the 10th person and is the chairman of that board and is responsible for making sure that the things that board talks about have a purpose and, and a meaning. When it comes time for the board to actually vote on something, the Fedora project leader doesn't really get a vote. Um, but usually, and I think this is a nice thing, in Fedora we have seen that most part uh, the Fedora board tends to continue to discuss an issue until they more or less get a consensus, right? If something is split down the middle, we don't just say, all right, well, it's five to four, or we'll let the Fedora project leader decide. We continue to talk about things until, uh, uh, until enough people are convinced to feel like they can all kind of buy into the decision. And sometimes that makes things take a little bit longer, but I think ultimately it's uh, a nicer way to do business. Anyone, anyone can jump in if I'm saying something wrong, by the way. All right.